and thank you for joining me today on Loyal World Info. Another day of the global spinning, another day of global news to digest. I offer a sane, rational voice for an insane, rational time. I will be your host, but first, let me share a little bit about me. I look forward to waking up to the international news like a child opening a Christmas present. I never know how I will act or activities I will do until after I unwrap my present. In the news case, what will I learn? What will it cause me to think about? What will I reflect back on? And what will I share with others? Stay with me and let's open presents together. Now, let's get into today's topics. Oh, and thank you for joining me today. On, you know what, that's... Okay, so our first article of the day comes from Korea. Comfort Woman Abbasi Group Denies Misappropriation Claims by a Victim. And let me read the story and then give you my thought. As you can see, this is a very old woman here, okay? And she's going to claim that she was mistreated during a time of war. So let's get into it and hear her story. A civic group that advocates for Korean victims of wartime sexual enslavement by Japan is facing controversy after a victim accused the group of misappropriating donations and exploiting the victims for their cause for nearly 30 years. The Korean Cons Council for Justices and Reminiscences for the issuers of the sexual slavery by Japan, which holds weekly rallies de demanding an apology and repatriation from Japan, denies the allegations saying donations have been used transparently and spent on the victims. H how donations were used is being verified by rather financial auditing and being made public through the procedures by the Korean Council, um, they said. Um, this 92-year-old victim of the Japanese military sexual slavery during the 2010 through 2000, well, 1910 through 1945 colonization of the Korean Peninsula, said Thursday that she will no longer participate in the weekly rallies, which have become a symbol of victims fighting for justice against Japan wartime atrocities. The the Wednesday rally should not be the week yeah, the Wednesday rally should not be held anymore. It is not helpful at all. We don't even know where the donations from all these students are spent. Let Lee said during the press uh, conference in the south southeastern city of Dagu. I don't even know the cash is, where the cash is coming from, but the, they collected donations and funds and have never been spent on the victims, she said. The donations of the civic groups collect for the students and others who attend. Then, Okay, so basically this is what I wanted to say. You know, I only became aware of this like around 2007, 2008 when I started working in Korea, and it was a hot topic back then. You know, they like they boycotted a lot of Japanese goods and everything else. And through the years, you know, they would Japan and Korea would haggle. And then I went to um, Taiwan, and I actually talked to a sex slave in Taiwan who was Taiwanese because Japan owned Taiwan as well as Korea. But they taught they treated the Taiwanese more like a colony. Anyway, the Taiwanese woman said. It was my it was my duty. Yes, you know she says I did it for my country. So Japan ruled a country at the time, and I did it, and I moved on. She goes, I didn't want to be play, be, uh, be a victim forever, and she goes, eventually I would I would hold myself or my country back, because because people like to be I'm the victim, come for me. I'm the victim, give me, give me, give me, which works sometimes, but other times people exploit you. To try to make you a victim so they can exploit you and make money off of you 
and she did not want that for her children. So she wanted to move on. And I kind of think the same thing, and this is where Korea needs to move on to. You know, when you're at war, war and peace are just two different things, and you have to get past it and build up. That's why I wonder, like this girl said, she's like, can't my country just move on? We don't want to be the victims anymore. It's kind of like in America. You have you have all these people saying we we were our great 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 grandfathers were sex slaves, not sex slaves, but um just slaves in general. Oh well, it was a whole different lifetime. Somebody owned you as a slave. What's what's okay back then changes. So anyway, what are your thoughts? Do you think they're like um do you think that they should keep promoting these comfort women issues, or should they kind of like move on into a whole new age? Are or is, or is there any other kind of crime that people in your country keep bringing up for victimhood that you think is outlived as time and people should move on? Please like or comment and describe your situation below. I would love to hear from you. Moving on to our second article today. Hospital staff told to enter self-quarantine. So you can look at this picture here and you can see the woman is kind of like in a box cube. So let's read her story and why she's she's in a hospital staff and quarantining herself. 26 medical staff at the Su Nagan Coming Hospital in the southern province of Natarwach, which is in Thai, Thai, um, Thailand, will be placed under 14-day self-quarantine after coming into contact with COVID-19 patients despite wearing pers personal protective gear. We think our medical staff will, will not be affected as we previously wore the PPE and we're following strict measures in challenge director of the hospital said. We need to comply with the 14-day quarantine order. According to the Center for the COVID-19 Situation, the Ministry of Health ha ha workers at categories as patients under investigation, well, PUI. Now, he, this guy, this doctor, he told the Bangkok Post in a phone interview on Wednesday that uh, the 26 health professionals came in contact with a 45-year-old patient who tested positive for the virus last weekend after going to the hospital to receive treatment for ammonia. The doctor in said the patient had traveled to Malaysia to attend a religious event in January, but two prior tests show the negative results prompting the authorities to suspect that maybe have been contacted the disease locally. He noted that uh, he noted the recent testing for the man's family showed no no infection was transmitted. So in the conclusion, they figured this person went to the hospital and got sick from a, a medical staff. And therefore they decided to quarantine everybody. So the government on Wednesday uh, reported one new coronavirus patient and a thigh major and one death of an Australian hotel manager. Okay, so but this is my thing. You know, a lot of uh, these ho these workers, medical workers, some of them will get the staff the virus and they will come home and they'll give it to their kids. You know, so the way they're putting their health on the line to treat you, but then uh, they may be affected other people. What do you think should be done? I mean, should we, should, do you think people have a right to see their family if they're working with sick people? Or, or should, I don't know, have dorms at the hospital? What should be done to uh, make life easier for the medical workers and make safety for the patients they see? Please uh, leave your comments below. Do you think everybody should be quarantined like that? Like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, moving on, and this is an interesting one. Hong Kong seizes fins from 38,500 endangered sharks. So, the reason this is interesting, you see a picture here of all these fish fins. Well, first off, keep in mind that China is trying to claim the whole southern China Sea from countries that actually own it, like Taiwan, Vietnam, Malaysia, and such. But more importantly, China has a habit of what they do. They bring the fish to the surface, well not fish, but the shark, and they cut off the tail, and then they sell that soup for say 100 US dollars or more. So, they, and they throw that, that fish, live fish back in the water because while the, the shark fin is good, 
the rest of the shark is not really eatable. So, let's read the article. Hong Kong. Hong Kong has seized 26 tons of, of smuggled shark fins uh, sliced from some 38,500 endangered animals in the largest bust in, of its kind in the southern Chinese city. The record haul was discovered in two containers from Ecuador and highlights the contained demand for shark fin, which is served at wedding banquets in many Chinese communities. The city's customs department unveiled the hall on Wednesday and said it was smashed previously has smashed previously records. Each consign, consigning of 13 tones broke the previous record the seizures of 3.8 tons of controlled shark fins made in 2019. The custom said most of the fins came from uh, therefore and silly sharks. Both endangered species, a 57-year-old man was arrested, but he has been released on bail pending further inquiries. Some of the ocean's most vital, vital apex predators, shark populations, have been decimated over the past few decades with, uh, with finding the industrial's long line fishing, finish fishing the uh, main corporates. So keep this in mind, right? Didn't, didn't just China just this week say we want to protect all the water to all the fish to grow back. But what they really want is they just want to catch all the fish and send them to China and deplete it even more. Fishing fleets often cut the fins from the sharks and throw the, throw the fatty main animal back in the sea to maximize profits. Yeah, because they don't want to carry that heavy fish on that they can't sell back to shore. The dried fins sell for considerable sums and are usually served in a gluttonous soup at banquets. The sale and consumption of shark fin is not illegal in Hong Kong, but must be licensed. So Hong Kong promotes this. Do you have shark fins? Have you ever had shark fin soup in the past? If you have, let me know. Years of campaigning by the environmentalists and celebrities like Chinese basketball star Yong Ming have led to the dish becoming less fashionable among younger consumers in China, Macau, and Taiwan. So, oh, so Taiwan probably does this too. But it remains stubbornly popular among older generations, and many prominent hotels and restaurants still offer it. A 2018 survey said the World Wildlife Fund uh, found 7 out of 10 Hong Kongers had eaten far shark fin soup th this year, usually at weddings, office functions, and such. So what do you think about that? How, do you, I mean, you know, these people are promoting killing these uh, animals well, not even kill them. Well, they take the fin off, and then they let, they throw the live animal back into the sea to die because it can't swim without a fin. Well, again, Taiwan and Hong Kong, besides China. So, what what should be done about that? Should we be arrest these uh, fishermen? Should we arrest the people who buy it, or what? What's your comment on that? What are your thoughts about uh, fishing animals illegally? Please like, comment, surprise, and I'd like to hear from you. Hey, moving on. Remote schools struggle to get pupils to return. So as you can see, this is like an old-fashioned schoolhouse. It looks like a two-building a two school. A teacher comes to his student's home in a remote hamlet. A hamlet is a very small town. To persuade them coming back to school after a long unscheduled break due to COVID-19. The teachers in mountainous areas have been struggling to persuade students to remote villages to return to school after a long break due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After more than three months of absence, students in many cities and provinces nationwide were joyful to return to schools earlier this week. However, the situation in remote mountain areas is quite different. To ensure the students do not miss on classes, Teachers of ethnic minority boarding schools in the mountainous districts of Min Ho, Tuyun Ho, in central Quang Binh province have gone to remote villages to inform students of the reopening schedule and to persuade them to return. Tran 
Tran Trong Om, Deputy Principal of Tron Ho Ethnic Minority Boarding School, uh, told VTV VN that there they had 15 schools in Trong Ho Commune with 527 ethnic minority students. After getting a schedule from the Provincial Department of Education and Training, the school asked a teacher to go to the villages to persuade students to come back to the school. So how would you like that if you are a teacher? It doesn't matter if you're an ESL teacher or you teach in your home country. Would you go to all your students' homes for whatever emergency or whatever and encourage them to come back to school or just go to hand them homework? Yes? No? Is that a duty you feel comfortable with or you think it's expected of you? I would like to know. It was because of the life in the remote and mountainous areas. It's very hard and children's learning is not cared for by their parents, the teacher said. Skipping class is regular, so the, so the after-school jobs of the teachers here is to visit students' homes to ask the parents to let them study, he said. Kao Thai Hong, a teacher in Shi Hamlet in Trong Ho District of Kwa Bet, said it was farming season, so the children had to work with their families. Wow, that sounds like um, Little House on the Prairie days, right? Uh, nowadays in America, we'll just sit there on the Nintendo Switch. To ensure all students come back to school, my colleagues and I had a knock on every house in the, in the evening. Not once, but many times. Yeah, so wow. What, what household chores do you do with your family? If you are a child or if you're an adult, what did you do to show put effort into your family as a child? I'd like to hear from it. Teachers in the northern mountainous province of La Chan have had similar experiences. In the border district of Mong Tong, most students are ethnic minorities, according to Li Ma Lin, heard of Mong Ti Department of Education. The population is scattered and transparent. It is difficult, so the students would not return to school after the unscheduled and prolonged break due to the pandemic. Teachers and border soldiers went to remote hamlets to persuade students to come back to school. In the boarding school of St. Paul Communal at Lai Chao City, all classrooms have been disinfected and have been quarantined areas in cases where students develop symptoms of COVID-19. Face mask and hand washing liquid and body temperature checks have been prepared for teachers and students. So, in, in this case, you know, some, pe so, some people want their kids to stay home and work on the farm. But what would happen when the mom and dad die? If that kid has no education, a lot of these kids end up either going mail order brides or um, faraway factories in China, some to, uh, fishing boat jobs, that, and they're like kind of sold into slavery that way. So, as a parent, well, why would you make your kids stay at home, even if it is safe, versus go to school and have a better life? I would really like to hear the answer to that one. Please let me know. But now, to ensure the one meter distance between the schools, a school has built some temporary rooms in the backyard, wow, for lodging. The classes will be divided to, into two studies shifts, and the number of students will be less than 30 per class. In Vietnam, it usually has 40 to 80 per class, so that's why they said 30. The meals will also be served in separate trays. Students will be recommended to keep a safe distance in canteens. However, the job will be difficult because most of the students are poor ethnic minority children, so their awareness of hygiene will, will be a challenge. And that is a question. You know, why does education or money equal good or bad hygiene? I mean, I don't know. If you're poor, can't, don't, don't you just turn the water on take a shower anyway? Don't you use soap? What does money and education have to do with personal hygiene? That is another question I have for you, and that's really why this article stood out to me. I don't understand how hygiene and education go together. Please enlighten me. Leave the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Okay, on to fashion. You know, earlier, like a week or two ago, Korea remade the Hamwook, which is the traditional Korean outfit. And they wanted to modernize it so people will um, wear it 
more often. But if me, it was, it was more of a cash grab. It, the material was different, and it was more like a wedding dress. So it lost its appeal to me, and I thought it was just bad. It was, it was breaking the tradition, breaking the heritage, breaking the culture. Now, today, Korea is back again. They say, we want to uh, sell uniforms into the traditional humble. And because so, Korea typically wear uniforms to school. Would, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that uh, besides just uniforms, they should try to make a uniform that fits the tradition of the, of the cultural tradition? Normally, Koreans, children would wear this kind of outfit for like when they're a little kid for uh, their China New Year or Tet or Solar New Year. But um, not too often. Now they'll be wearing this every day. While I do think it could be good and unique, I think children prefer freedom of their own clothes over a uniform. On the other hand, uh, dry cleaners used to be very popular in Korea due to uh, every student buying a uniform. So, and therefore, you know, they had a steady income of uh, cleaning uniforms to keep dry cleaning cheap, actually. So, that's my kind of my question for you. Two, two questions. Would you prefer a uh, uniform based off of your own your country culture or do you prefer wearing free clothes in my case when i when i read this article for well this picture for the first time i was well why can't that we have a uniform because vietnam wears uniforms and, and other countries do too like an aoyai uniform for all students or um the one for the lao girls and the, and the taiwanese girls and the thai girls why can't they all have a uniform outfit that's similar to the traditional outfit I think that would be great. What about you? Like, comment, subscribe. Okay. I just picked this article up today and I almost laughed. Two Chinese ships chased uh, Japanese fishing boats near the Saku Island. So, so it's not even just Vietnam, Thai, uh, Taiwan, and Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines. Even the Japanese are running in fear of the Chinese and they're running way, I don't know, just funny to me. So let's read this story. Two China Coast Guard ships have, uh, have approached and chased a Japanese fishing boat by in Japan, Japanese territorial waters around the Sadaku Islands in the East China Sea. The Japanese Coast Guard said Saturday. The Japanese Coast Guard ordered the Chinese vessels to leave the waters and deployed a patrol ship to safeguard the fishing boats, whose three crew members were under unheard during the Friday incident. A total of four China Coast Guard ships were in Japanese waters around the Japanese administration administrative Isles, claimed by the China for about two hours from 4 p.m. Two of the four pursued the Japanese boat, which was about 12 kilometers southwest of the Urchin Islands around 4.50 p.m. It was the first encounter by the Chinese ship into Japanese waters around these islands um, since April 17th, so quite a while. Beijing has been sending official vessels close to the islands known as Daku in China in an apparent attempt to assess control of it. The Isolates are also claimed by Taiwan, which calls them Tatisa. So, what do you think about this? Do do you think? I mean, to me, it's funny because what was it during World War II? The Japanese, the Japan was invading China, and now the the proud Japanese were running away. And so, I thought it was funny that they got. Maybe they will now help Vietnam and the other countries for an update too. You know, you'll never hear China um, running into North Korea waters because North Korea sold all their fishing rights, all their water rights to um, China. Typically speaking, for those that don't know, usually it's like 20 kilometers, yeah, 20 kilometers uh, of coastal water or so, uh, something like that. That is your territory around your country. So they call that the safe distance. But um, that's why when one country claims an island that they get that 20 kilometers around that island so all the fish all the minerals under the dirt and everything else belong to them so what do you think about that anyway do you, 
Do you think Japan will help? Or do you think this, this conflict will escalate? Please like, comment, and subscribe below. Hi. The small clip you saw was brought to you by Loyal World News. If you like what you saw, you should subscribe and, tune, and look up my daily Loyal Real News report for its full version. If you don't want to watch it on YouTube, prefer to be on the road, I also have a podcast in, in every full-length video I put up.